بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا وعظيمنا وحبيب قلوبنا وشفيع نفوسنا أبي القاسم محمد اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين وأصحابه الغر الميامين الحمد لله الذي جعلنا من المتمسكين بولاية سيدي ومولاي علي بن أبي طالب الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله أما بعد يقول الله في كتابه الكريم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ولا تحسبن الذين قتلوا في سبيل الله أمواتا بل أحياء عند ربهم يرزقون Can the dead visit us is a question that is asked by many Indeed you find that many in the world until today wonder about their beloved and whether their beloved can come back and visit them in any shape or indeed in any form. We thought the ticket on the flight to Barzakh was a one-way ticket. It turned out there could be a return if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decides. No doubt those of us who have lost those who we love, it's an extremely difficult period. When you lose your father or your mother especially, the parents who you hold so dear in your life and admire so much that period of separation from them, even though many around you will say to you that yes, you'll be around them in the world of Barzakh, that period of separation can be extremely difficult. In some cases, extremely traumatic as well. That you find that that period without a doubt is a period where some don't recover from, as in there are those who lose their mother and find it extremely difficult to recover and return into everyday life. Yes, you may see them moving around physically, but deep down, they are extremely hurt from seeing their mother pass away or from not having their mother around them. Because if I have my mother around me every day and she is the backbone of my life, and then I dread the day where I'm going to have to bid farewell, that period is extremely traumatic. And some find it difficult to recover from that trauma, especially those who, for example, may have lost young ones and wonder about those young ones and miss the presence of those young ones. Likewise, the way you lose someone may vary from one situation to another. A person may lose someone who dies in their sleep. There may be others who lose those who go through extremely difficult times, as we see now with COVID-19, Seeing your father or seeing your mother going through the hospital system and having their body go through so much difficulty and pressure is a trial on them and it takes its toll on us. And so you find that some of us wonder whether in the religion of Islam, the dead who have passed away, is there any chance that they can come back and visit us? How many times have you felt the presence of someone who's passed away in your life? Say a wife or a husband. Say a parent or a beloved sibling. But you feel their presence somewhere in the house that day. You feel that it's as if they were sitting there. You obviously cannot put a finger to it because you believe that religiously they've died. But does the religion of Islam give us an understanding that our beloved who are now deceased may come back and visit us from the world of Barzakh? Because we said that their bodies may have died, but they are in the world of the souls. And is there a possibility that those souls may return? In one way, we may see them, for example, in our dreams. 
Sometimes when God allows us to see our beloved who have passed away in our dreams, sometimes it's a mercy from him when he allows us to see them and it's a mercy from God when he doesn't allow us to see them. Because you may have some who might say, I want to see them, but maybe God does not allow them to come in your dreams because we said that there is a sort of connection between the world of dreams, the world of Barzakh and this world that we live in. Maybe God doesn't want you to see the state that they're in. It may not be good for you that day. But then sometimes maybe you see them and there's still that connection. But you do wonder, do they ever come home after they've died? Are they able to see my actions? Will they be proud of my actions? Do they see the a'mal that I'm performing as those a'mal that make them proud or not? Even further than that, sometimes in the majalis of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam in Muharram, Sometimes we hear the reciters recite that Fatima al-Zahra salam came to Karbala or that Imam Ali salam was allowed to come to Karbala or that other members of Al Muhammad salawatullah wa salamu alayhima it's as if in the final moments of Imam al-Hussein salam the angels and the members of the prophets and members of Al Muhammad salawatullah wa salamu alayhima were able to return back to Karbala a person says is this true or no or is this just exaggeration from the pulpits that the khatib on the manbar may be someone who's exaggerating how can someone like Fatima Zahra alayhi salam who's died come back to Karbala Karbala was exactly 50 years after she died or how could for example prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like Ibrahim or Musa Come to Karbala, they're in the world of Barzakh. They can't come back here and see what happened at Karbala. They had died thousands of years before what took place at Karbala. Therefore, this is a topic on the social and the theological level. On the theological, it affects our aqaid. But on the social level, no doubt, it gives a sort of happiness and glad tidings when a person knows that the one they loved more than any other who is now passed away, still has some sort of connection with them. Let's tonight examine the basis of this understanding of the connection between the dead and those who are living. Can they visit us or no? I'd like to examine this in the following stages. Number one, which ayah, verse in the Holy Quran, highlighted that there are some you should never look at and say they are dead. Rather, they are alive. Number two, what is the rizq that they receive that the verse mentions? And how can that rizq affect their communication with us in this world from where they are in Barzakh? Number three, and of the utmost importance, how are some of the highest souls in Barzakh given the opportunity to help the message of the religion, especially on the day of Badr? Number four, who had died thousands of years ago but were allowed to come back from the dead to help Sayyida Khadija in her birth of Fatima al-Zahra alayhi salam. Number five, when we look at books like Al-Kafi or the Bihar and the traditions of Imam al-Sadiq and Imam al-Kadhim sallallahu alayhi wa how many times can our deceased come back and visit us? And how does their fada'il and their menzila and their a'mal, position and deeds in this world affect and have an influence on the number of times they can come and visit us. Knowing they can visit us, how should we look at our behaviors and maybe reflect on our behaviors? And what's the best acts that we can perform that bring farah and joy to the heart of those who have passed away? On this wonderful night of the birth of Imam al Hassan alayhi salam, Let's examine this and dissect the topic in complete depth. When a Muslim turns around to you and says that the dead have no role in our lives, on the contrary, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala highlighted in one famous ayah of the Holy Quran that do not count those who have been killed in the way of God as being dead, rather they are alive. Which ayah? Surah 3, verse 169. Because this ayah refers to those who have an unbelievably high station in Barzakh, and that is the shuhada, the shaheed, be they young or be they old, be they a qasim or be they an anas or an abis, have an extremely high status in the world of Barzakh, symbolized by this ayah. Because in this ayah, what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala state? 
بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ولا تحسبن الذين قتلوا في سبيل الله أمواتا Don't count those who have died in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who have killed, been killed in the way of God as being dead. Rather, they are alive. This is fundamental because without a doubt, it's highlighted that the station of the martyr is so high that they are not meant to be counted as those who even the angels take like any other body. You may have someone who dies a normal death. But then you have those who die, for example, on the battlefield. That person who dies on the battlefield laid down their life. The lure of this world and living within it did not come ahead of them striving to ensure that justice was established. There were some of them around the Holy Prophet, peace be upon his family, who were so young when they passed away. There were others of them who were at an old age. But they turn around to the Holy Prophet, peace be upon his family, and say that we know that this is not the end for us. We're going to move from this world to the other. And what better than dying in the way of truth and justice? Because a martyr is not just anyone who dies on the battlefield. A martyr is someone whose intention was an intention that the act that I'm performing gets me closer to God. Not because my donkey or my mule is on the other side of the battle. Not because I hate them, therefore we have a common goal. Not because the spoils of war are there for me. And if I don't get them, I'll run away at Uhud. No, on the contrary. The intention was that I'm willing to stand for justice against oppression, against injustice. Those people, the malaika, give them ghusl. You don't give them ghusl. The angels give them ghusl. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends an eye on their honor. The ayah said that don't count these who have been killed in this way as being dead. Rather, they are alive. Alive where? Alive in the world of Barzakh. They're alive. They're in a community. And in that community, Allah added a line, a fundamental line. What was the line? The line was highlighting that they were still receiving sustenance from God. What was it trying to say to us? In this world, I have rizq when I'm alive. I have food on my table, alhamdulillah. I have, for example, something to drink, alhamdulillah. I'm able to breathe, alhamdulillah. I may have my family around me. I may have security around me. But then what is the rizq after one dies? Someone says, after you die, you can't eat. But we established in Barzakh, you can eat. And you drink. And you feel pain. And you feel sickness. And you feel happy. And you're in a community... But what is the risk that they receive? Let's look at the opinions. One form of risk that those who have died in the way of Allah receive is that they are in a world where they grow and develop. If someone dies young as a shaheed or as a shaheed on the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they still grow. There is still hidayah for them in barzakh. Until they come to that day of judgment, there is no questioning. But they are still purified to an extent to an extent that allows them to understand the deeper meaning and the wisdom of religion, which maybe as a 15, 16 year old, they did not understand. Secondly, another form of rizq that they receive is that they sit in the company of the greatest of those who were chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That they sit with Muhammad and Al Muhammad, salawatullah wa salamu alayhima. Remember, they're alive. Thirdly, they may be given the honor of returning back to visit their family members. That's a form of rizq as well. As in over there, salah, we know very well rizq is not just food on the table. We, salah is a rizq for us in this world. Likewise over there, one of the different forms of rizq that doesn't have to be eating is that you're allowed to come back and see your family members and see the state of your family members. Knowing how much they have mourned, you pass away. Of course, the shaheed, if they have debts on their shoulders, that is still something that will be a hold up for them. Because there are some Muslims who think that as long as I'm killed in the way of Allah, I'm a shaheed, that's it, Jannah awaits. One area you should never have are debts on your shoulders. Because those debts will still even affect the position of the shaheed in the world of Barzakh. But we find therefore on the first level, those who have died or been killed in the path of God, they are given rizq. Even after they've died, do not count them as dead. They are alive. 
and they may come back. Therefore, if a person died in the path of Allah, was killed in the path of Allah, like Imam Amir al muminin alayhi salam, then why could Imam Ali not be at Karbala? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looked at them as not being dead in Najaf. Rather, they are alive in Barzakh, receiving rizq from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They're able to return and witness what is happening to their son in their final moments if Allah pleases. Someone says, okay, those who are shuhada, but there are levels which are like that of the shaheed. There are levels. For example, man mata ala hubbi al Muhammad. Mata ka anna shaheed. Whoever dies with the love of Al Muhammad, salawatullah wa salam alayhi wa dies like they are a martyr. Yes. Therefore, if a person dies with that love of Ahl al Bayt, again, they do not to be counted as being dead. Rather, they are alive and they're receiving their own form of rizq as well. A lady, if she dies while giving birth, then she dies as a martyr and has the reward similar to that of the martyr. Therefore, they are not to be seen as being dead. Rather, they are alive. And that's why you find that those who die in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there is a certain amount of rizq allotted to them where they may be allowed to come back to visit those who are still alive. And that's why you find that in the momentous battle in Islamic history, the battle of Badr, we know very well that in that battle of Badr, the Muslims were 313 and the Quraysh were over 950. The Muslims on that day were feeling, will we be victorious or won't be? Some of them were certain there's nothing to worry about while Ali ibn Abi Talib is in this army and the Prophet, the general, will never lose a battle. Others know, others had the inclination that they'll get destroyed. They weren't renowned soldiers in the cases of some of them. Some of them were passing by their cell by date and any second were going to fall. So you found that on that day, the Quran mentions that we sent unseen forces, the angels, to help the Muslims on that day. Who were these unseen forces according to the ulama? One opinion was that those unseen forces were malaika, like Jibra'il and others. A thousand or more of them that had come to help on that day. And Allah could have put 3,000. And Allah could have given 5,000 had he wanted. A second opinion was it was a mixture of malaika and of the highest souls who had died, who were in the world of Barzakh, who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because of their angelic level, wanted them to go and be on the side of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa on the day of Badr. I thought the dead cannot come back and visit the believer. If the dead cannot come back and visit, then what is this narration? That the highest of those in the world of Barzakh were allowed to come and accompany the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa on the day of Badr. When the Quran mentions we sent you unseen forces or we sent the angels, what did this mean? This was trying to tell us clearly that these unseen forces were there to help the Prophet, peace be upon him, his family, to help the companions. If Allah wants to, he'll allow the souls of those in Barzakh to come back to visit the believers and to help them on that day. Because Shaitan Iblis was also on the other side until he said, I see what you don't see because he takes the form of a human. He said, I see what you don't see to the army of Abu Jahal. I am scared and I fear my Lord, the master of the universe. He knew that there were souls there that Allah allowed to come from the world of Barzakh, return ticket back to here. That's on the day of Badr. Likewise, where else? With the birth of Fatima al Zahra alayhi salam. Go and read the narrations about the birth of Fatima al Zahra alayhi salam. And you'll see the proof that the dead can come back to this world and visit us. Because when Sayyidah Khadija alayhi salam, when she gave, when she was in her pangs of pregnancy, in those difficult years, don't forget, because those were the years where people were fighting the Prophet, peace be upon his family. He had come out with the open message, the fifth year of his prophethood. His companions, in some cases, were getting killed, the likes of Sumayya and Yasir, the first shuhada in Islamic history, the parents of Ammar, they were butchered. Bilal was being tortured. Ammar was being tortured. Others had to go to Abyssinia. That meant that the ladies of Mecca wanted nothing to do with Sayyida Khadija alayhi salam. No wife of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon his family, 
faced as much difficulties defending Islam like she did. Because the rest were in the period where Islam was at its peak. Whereas she was at the period where there was only, in my opinion, when she was close to giving birth to Fatima Zahra wouldn't say more than 60, 70 people who had become Muslim. Not more than that. There was only a bunch of them who had joined the Holy Prophet, peace be upon his family. The ladies of Quraysh boycotted her. They did not want anything to do with her. There was only a couple who were there, like Fatima bint Asad, the mother of Imam Ali alayhi salam. You had, for example, Umar Ayman. Sumayya had just passed away in that period, according to narrations, maybe a bit after. There weren't many who were loyal to her. Can you imagine when she would come to some of them and say, listen, I'm in my most difficult moments. I'm in the pangs of pregnancy. It's, these are the final days before I give birth. If any of you could help me, they would shut the doors on Khadija alayhi salam. They would close their doors. They wouldn't come. Why? In some cases, they respected her, but were fearing what would Abu Lahab say to us? What would Abu Sufyan say? What would Walid ibn al-Mughira say? What would Utba say? What would Hind say? What would Um Jamil say? They were worried, on the one hand, from what the people would turn around and say. They were worried that the people might turn around and they might, for example, say that, how dare you help this lady? Or there were people who truly hated her, as in the likes of Hind and Um Jamil, truly. They hated her and other ladies as well were jealous of her position. That not only was she married to the best of men, whether they admitted it or no, they still believed he was Sadiq and he was Amin. So there was that jealousy that existed that she was married to the best of men, or that she was wealthy, or that she was seen as the Tahira of the people of Quraysh, and the Amira in Quraysh. So when you have all of these, there are going to be ladies who are jealous from you. In those final moments, just before she gave birth to Fatima al-Zahra alayhi salam. Naturally, those were difficult moments. And you found that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did something to highlight to us that the dead can visit us. And if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to, they can have different appearances on them visiting us. If you're at the highest level of iman, then you see them literally like how they were when they were alive. Believe you me, there are some who have died 20 years ago. If you were to open their grave today, the smell and the fragrance is that which is unique. You'd think they'd die yesterday. There are some whose iman was so high that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would say to them in barzakh, in their highest position, the foremost in faith and piety, the sabiqoon, leave barzakh and come back if you don't mind. I have a duty for you. I want you to go and visit Sayyida Khadija for she's in a difficult place. The narrations mention that when she was there, suddenly she heard a lady say to her, I am Eve, your mother. Hawa, the wife of Nabi Adam, alayhi salam. She came, she was there as a nurse, a midwife for Sayyida Khadija, alayhi salam. Just her, I am who? I am Asiya, the wife of Pharaoh, second person who came from the world of Barzakh. Because these had the highest positions in Barzakh. And if Allah wants to, those who were of the best of the mu'mineen can visit regularly. If not, can come to this momentous occasion. I am Hawa, the mother. I am Hawa, your mother, the wife of Adam. I am Asiya, the wife of Pharaoh. Who was the third who came? I am Kulthum, the sister of Musa alayhi salam, who was so instrumental in Nabi Musa being reunited with his mother. And who was the fourth that came? I am Maryam, the mother of Nabi Isa alayhi salam. Allah, can you get a hospital with nurses like that? Imagine when you're giving birth, you had a hospital with nurses of that quality. Hawa. Kulthum, Asiya, Maryam, alayhi salam. Why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow them to come back? Not only did Allah love Khadija so much, not only did Allah love Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also wanted to highlight two other things. That this Fatima, this is the type of people who come around her birth, 
And that if I want to, those who are dead, they are alive in Barzakh, I can allow them to come back to help anyone or to witness at least what's happening in these moments. When Asiya and Maryam and Kulthum and Hawa come for your birth, I ask you when we say, that Fatima al-Zahra is the greatest lady to have ever lived. And people say that's an exaggeration. Look at who's at her birth. Who's attended her birth? Who's attended her mother in those moments? Who highlighted the greatness of Fatima in that moment? But what was also highlighted? That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is able at any moment to allow those in the world of Barzakh to come and visit us. Here then comes the main question. I lost my daughter, for example, and that daughter of mine, let's say, died in a car accident. Or I lost my father, for example. He had cancer and he was going through a lot of pain. Or I lost my mother, for example. I lost my mother due to old age. Or I lost my brother in an accident, for example. And I miss them so much. And I wish that they were able to return. There are many in this situation who wish that one way or the other they could just say salam alaykum to them one final time. Or they wish and want to know that can they come and visit them or no. Some of these people say that I feel the presence of my beloved. And if the Quran is saying, And the Quran has shown that there were people on the day of Badr who were allowed to go from the world of Barzakh to come and visit us. And the hadith show that those ladies who died thousands of years ago, like Maryam, like Asiya, like Hawa, were able to come. How about us? Is there any chance that my father, who I love, is able to come back to our house? Is there a possibility that my father, who I lost a couple of years ago, or my mother that I lost, 10 years ago, is there a possibility that they can come and visit us or no? Where do we go to for this? Naturally, this can only be found in the Quran or in the teachings of Muhammad and Al-Muhammad salawatullahu wasalamu alayhima. Either I go to the Prophet, peace be upon him, or his family. The Prophet on the night of Mi'raj stopped in the world of Barzakh and would know all the secrets. And he would pass them on to his family members. Then I open books like Al-Kafi, Furu' Al-Kafi, for example. I open Kitab Al-Jana'is, for example. I open the Bihar, for example. And when I open these key texts, which are full of the traditions of the Imams, in this area, you find a discussion of Imam Al-Sadiq and Imam Al-Kadim, salawatullahu wasalamu alayhima. There are five hadiths you may find in Al-Kafi, and a number of hadiths in the Bihar, which discussed this very question. Can our deceased ones visit us? They are asked by the likes of Hafs al-Bukhtari. They are asked by Ibn Mahbub, for example. They are asked by Muhammad, the son of Sinan. They are asked by Ishaq bin Ammar. These companions of Imam al-Sadiq and Imam al-Kadhim, many of the Shia don't know about them, haven't studied the lives of the likes of Abu Basir or Zurara or Muhammad bin Muslim, or oh, Mu'min al-Taq, Hisham ibn al-Hakam, Hisham bin Salim, all of these, Jabir bin Yazid, al-Juhfi, Mufaddal, and others, we need to study their biographies. They are the ones around the Imams. They would have asked the Imams on these key theological issues. They asked the Imams of Al-Muhammad, salawatullah wa salamu alayhima. They said to them that the deceased, can they come and visit? Let's look at, by studying the narrations, what the imams mentioned. Because there may be someone watching right now and they want to know, my mother can visit or no? And is there a possibility that my father has visited or no? I want to see, you found on the first level, whether you are a mu'min or you are a kafir. You are a believer or you are a disbeliever. You can visit your beloved. The dead can visit. Be a dead mu'min. Or be he a dead kafir. Be he or be she a dead mu'mina or a dead kafir. Huh? They are able to visit. But their visitation frequency is not the same. 
what they see is also not the same. Let me explain. Kafir or kafira, the disbelievers, male or female, are able to come back to the homes. This is from Imam al-Sadiq and Imam al-Kadhim alayhi They're able to come back to the homes of the deceased, of those who they love. The deceased are able to come back to their homes. When they come back to their homes, they may come back according to narrations once a month or once a year. Not very frequently at all, but they are able to. When they come back, you'll find that the worst of the actions of their, of their beloved ones, they see it's not covered from them. And that there is a hasra within them. A hasra is like when you say alas or woe. That exclamation of a certain amount of emotion. A hasra that look at what they're doing. I had so much that I could have done. In my life, I had so much time in my life. I had so many warnings in my life. Sometimes that experience of the disbeliever, when they come back and see their family, is an agonizing experience. Even if they see their family, say for example, a disbeliever, but their children are converts or believers. Even when they see their family is doing good, there's an agony in them. Why didn't I follow the path that they followed? Ya laytani qaddamtu li hayati. I wish I had given to my life the way they're giving to their life. I wish that I had given more. I wish that I had taken heed. I wish that I had introspected and reflected more. What's this world about for the human being? Except more introspection, more reflection needed for that what differentiates us from others. So they can visit, not as frequent. And when they visit, they'll see the bad and they'll see the good. And when they see it, there is a feeling of agony in them, a hasra in them, that they wish they could have given back more. Alas, they were not able to. That's for who? The disbeliever. Someone says, but Sayyidina, my father was a lover of Ahlul Bayt, a believer, one who held us on the path, one who guided us to the mosques and the Hsaniyat, and to hold on to the Quran and to establish Salah. Yes, those are able without a doubt, are given the chance to return. First and foremost, when they return, how often? Depends on their menzila and their a'mal and their fada'il in this world is how many times they can come from the world of barzakh to come and visit us. What's the most frequent that they can come? Every single day. Every single day. There are some who may come once a week. That is as good as their amal, proportional. Some twice a week, some three times a week, some seven times a week, they're able to come. The lowest in iman, the one who was not that religious, but had the iman, the lowest, will come at least once a week on a Friday. You feel something on a Friday, that Friday becomes even more important, not just because it's a chosen day, but the one with the least iman. Meaning that their amal and their iman was basic. They'll come once. Others twice. Others thrice. Others more. It depends on their position in this world. Therefore, even for us who are still alive, but don't want to break that connection with our family members, we still want to have some sort of connection. The more good we do in this world, the more we're able to frequently come back and visit. Further than that, there are some of the mu'mineen, they see the good in their family and they see some of the not so good. There are some of the mu'mineen because of their high status, Allah only allows them to see the good deeds their family members do and Allah covers the bad deeds that their family members perform. Imagine that level. Because Allah wanted to honor you doesn't want to break your heart and doesn't want you to have an uncomfortable arena or life in Barzakh. So when Allah allows you to return and you're looking at your family members, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows that you're looking at them, knows there's a tension within you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that person with the highest level of iman 
covers the bad that may be happening in their family members' lives. They may have been the type who had read the Quran and who had been the type who had organized majalis and had been the type who had tried to remain pure at home. Now they see their family members' houses. They may, for example, not know that their family members now have vulgar music in the house, obscenities in the house, illegal substances or substances that destroy one's body in the fridge. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala covers that from them. The highest of the mu'mineen. Some of the mu'mineen, however, no. No covering. They'll see those who they left behind. They'll see the good and they'll see the not so good. When they see the good, that's when the farah enters their heart. Alhamdulillah, look what I left behind. I left behind those children. Look at them reading the Quran, teaching their children the Quran. Look at them remembering Muhammad and Al Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Look at them at the house being people of honor and dignity and not people of slander trying to destroy or support those who slander and destroy. No, on the contrary. Look at what I've left behind. Knowing that that is a sadaqah they left behind. But knowing that on the day of judgment, I'm going to be asked about my family. This is a reality. We will come to the day of judgment. Allah will ask, why was your son like this? Why was your daughter like this? Yes, they had their free will. But you are also responsible to a certain extent. Would you answer me about this? So the mu'min returns. Someone says, how? Will we see them exactly? You see, sometimes in the hadith, asfur is mentioned. Or tayr is mentioned. As if a bird is on your porch watching you. That means next time don't, for example, come towards the birds on your patio and start kicking them or throw a ball at them. That could be, for example, someone from your family who's passed away, who's come to visit you. But that could also be metaphorical. It could be a case that Allah SWT allows that soul to come back, but you could not see, you could not fathom that soul, but Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala allows it to return. It returns, it can see. Maybe once a week at the minimum, but definitely for some virtually every day. If Allah wants to, and if they want as well, Allah wants, maybe they want to, they don't want, it's up to them. But they can come back, and they're able to see their family members. And when they see their family members in obedience to Allah, nothing brings more of a smile. And that's why this point is fundamental. If I now know that my father or my mother has passed away, and I know that they may be coming to the edge of our houses, let me reflect on what I'm doing in my house. If I'm doing something that my father would never be proud of, forget that. Of course, Allah is watching me. The Prophet, peace be upon him, his family has the honor of watching me. Some of the believers of the righteous have the honor of watching me. But say you cannot reach that level of taqwa. Would your dad be proud of what you're doing at home? Would your dad be proud of the level that you've reached? If your father established the Husayniyyah and you hardly go to the Husayniyyah. So what was the point of those Husayniyyahs that your fathers established? Was it just to tell people I have a Husayniyyah or to continue that message of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam? If your father established a library and you haven't established anything to give back to humanity. Your father established a hospital. You gave back nothing to humanity. Your father established a room or sponsored orphans or and you haven't given back. If I know therefore that the dead can visit and that Allah gives that honor to some of the people of Barzakh, then without a doubt, it should make me reflect on my own personal behavior, on how I'm behaving in the house. Because there are some who neglect this outright. They forget that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows our dead ones to visit. Would my mother be proud of me when I'm sitting at home, when a majlis of Imam al-Hussein is at the mosque, sitting at home making excuses that this is not a big kushali or a big wafat or a big shahad or a big... Uh, occasion. It's not Muharram or Shahar Ramadan. Therefore, I'll stay at home. That father who used to carry you to the mosque and take you to the mosque, were he to see you or she to, to see you sitting at home watching nonsense while the mosque is open. How many of us appreciate our mosque more than ever before now? So a person has to reflect that if my daily departed ones can visit, what is their state? I want them to be in a state where the Quran mentions that they are happy with what they've seen and they can't wait to welcome others. Because you know those who've died, when they know, when someone dies, they see them in the world of Barzakh and they ask them. 
They ask them, how is this person? If they hear the person is good, they smile. If they hear the person's died, they're worried. Why? Because if they've died, why have they not come to our company in Barzakh? That means they've gone to the village of the damned or the evil. Or no, they've gone to a lower level than us. What we want is to keep that smile on the faces of our parents or the faces of our beloved. That if they can even visit us on a Friday or once a month or once a year, or every day, or once a week, that they see us, and they're proud, in the way that we, of course, want, above all else, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to be proud of our behaviors, and to be proud of our action, so can the dead visit us, the minimum for a mu'min, is once a week on a Friday, otherwise, the more iman you have, the more times in the week, you're able to, to come and visit according to the traditions of Imam Sadiq and according to the traditions of Imam Sadiq nothing brings more joy where there is suddenly a praise of Allah than when those beloved ones see you performing something in the path of Allah and you see them alhamdulillah returning back and informing everybody else of what the position is what else brings them joy when they see us pay sadaqah on their behalf that sadaqah that we pay on their behalf, the hadiths mention, brings our deceased one so much joy, you will never appreciate. Because when someone dies, first thing you do is sadaqah, then you do salat al wahsha But pay sadaqah on their behalf. You see an orphan, help them. You see the poor help. You see homeless help. Dedicate it in their name. Nothing brings more joy to the one who has died when they see you giving sadaqah. It brings immense joy for them. Charity, no doubt, is that which brings joy to those who have died. Further than that, what else brings joy when they're looking at us? When we're praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for mercy and forgiveness for them. There's no point sitting back and just saying, I miss my mom, I miss my dad. I miss my mom, I miss my dad. I cry for my mom, I cry for my dad. Alhamdulillah. But do that which is helpful to them. You have the ability to sit and read dua. Read Dua Tawbah on their behalf. Read Dua Al-Mujir so that the hellfire they are protected from. Read Dua Yastashir. Read Dua Abu Hamza. Read it so that you're praying for their Rahmah and you're praying for their Maghfirah at the same time. Nothing brings them joy like Sadaqah, like those who pray for their Rahmah, those who pray for their Maghfirah. That is what they want from us. They don't want to come to our house and see us cry and cry and cry. Alhamdulillah, we cry and we will continue. We love them. But when they see us pick up Sahif al-Sajjadiyah of Imam Zain al-Abideen or Dua Arafah of Imam al Hussein or Dua Arafah of Imam Zain al-Abideen, as we know, there are two Dua Arafahs of the Imams. Or they see us pick up, for example, Dua Makaram al-Akhlaq or Dua Kumail. That is what brings joy to them. So if you imagine that your dad may be looking at you now and your dad sees you reading the Quran or reading Dua in honor of them, Rahman and Maghfira, that is what brings us joy. Further than that, Something of the utmost importance. What is it? Say I go to Hajj and I want my dad or my mom to come Hajj with me. Someone says, bro, they're dead. No, no, we said that they're in Barzakh. They're in the world of the souls. And the mu'min is allowed to visit their beloved. Ask Allah, ya Allah, let them come to Hajj with me. You may not see them on that Hajj. Depends on your level. You may not see them. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if he wants... He'll allow them to be there alongside you. You go Ziyarat al Hussein, for example. Go to Karbala. May Allah bless us all to go to Hajj. And then to go on Ziyarat al-Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. You go to Ziyarat al Hussein. Say, for example, it's a Thursday night and you are in Karbala. You visited Abel Fad. And now you want to visit Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. But you know how much your mom loved Aba Abdullah. And that night there's an emptiness in you and you want your mother to be there. Can she? 100%. Ask Allah, she'll be there with you in Karbala. Who gave us this clear story? One of our greatest maraja. Ayatullah al-Uzma, Sayyid Shahab al-Din al-Mar'ash najafi This grand scholar where you find his library is still there in Qom, where many ulama and many of the laity have benefited from his library. He mentions when he was younger, he just could not achieve the levels of being so strong and intellectual in his studies like what he became later on. 
There were moments where he felt that his memory was not the best memory. He was feeling unwell sometimes. He had a bit of west west air. Couldn't see too well. And he had always mentioned how much he wanted to serve Ahl al-Bayt, but it wasn't working out for him. So he says that my father had passed away and I really had just wished my father was around so I can open up to him and say, Dad, I'm not doing too well in my studies. Remember, this was a man who studied in Najaf and in Samarra and in Kathmain, eventually being a beacon of light in Qom. You found that this man said that I had gone to visit Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. He goes, it was winter and I had gone with the intention that, you know what? I just want to go there and I want to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that, Ya Allah, strengthen me. I've come near Sayyidah Shuhada and where he's buried, Ya Allah, strengthen me that I can continue to persevere and be forbearing in my studies so I'm able to serve your religion. He says, I went there and I was meeting the person who was in charge of the haram, who was a friend of my father, said, Mahmoud, may Allah bless his soul. I said to him, do you mind if I stay here the night? He said, Mawlana, what do you mean stay here the night? You know, we're going to close it. And those days, there's only candles. There's not electricity. And he said, no, no, please allow me just to stay the night. Next to say the shuhada. He said, I stayed there that night. When he goes, I had wished my father was here. So I can open up to my father. He said, I wanted to open up my heart to Allah SWT. I wondered, where shall I sit? He said, I went near the head of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. And he said, then I thought, no, I don't have enough about me. Who am I to sit near the head of Imam al Hussein? Alayhi salam, he said, then I went towards near the chest where they say the baby is. No, he said, I went by the feet near where Ali al-Akbar is. Look how much importance and how great Ali al-Akbar's position is in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the eyes of his father, that sitting near him and talking to Allah could ensure that one of your marhumin is in your presence in Ziyarat al Hussein. He says that at that moment I heard a sort of movement or sound or voices from the area where Ibrahim al Mujab is buried. So he said, I went towards that area, I turn around, I see a number of the ulama sitting, reciting the holy Quran. Who's amongst them? My marhum father. Allah. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to, your marhum can come from the barzakh to come and visit. Like those ladies helped Sayyid Khadija alayhi salam. He said, but I saw my father. Hadiths mention asfur, tair. You never know. It depends the level of iman. Like how Khadija saw those ladies. You never know. He said, I saw my father. I said, father, what are you doing here? He said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opens the heavens for us. That we come on this night, Thursday night, and we recite the Quran in honor of Sayyid al Shuhada and what he gave back to the religion of Islam. And he looked at him and he said to him, Father, believe me, this is the reason I came and I wanted to see you and I missed you and so on. He said to him, My son, stay a bit more. Why? He said, In a moment, Imam al Hussein is going to come and his throne will be on the top of his dharih. And he will sit there and the other malaika will join. You who asked by sitting by Ali al-Akbar, this is how high this is in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ayatullah al-Mar'ashi Najaf says, from that day onwards I had a strength to serve al-Muhammad sallallahu wa sallam alayhima. Where his library now in Qom, no doubt a sadaqa jari, over 20,000 square foot library which people benefit from until today. But he says it was on that night that I saw my father. And when I saw my father, my heart opened up. That my father who had passed away, here I am on Ziyarah. And that's why it's a fundamental lesson for us, this story, my dear brothers and sisters. If you go to Hajj, say, Ya Allah, my mom used to love going to Hajj. Let her come to Hajj with us this year. There'll be a breeze coming past you. You'll feel your mother's presence there. Ya Allah, when I go to, for example, Jannah al -Baqih, you know your mother or your sister or your brother or your father or your friend. You think to yourself, Ya Allah, you allow the mu'mineen to return. And to visit, visit those beloved ones, let them come to Jannat al baqiyah Where we all want to be on a night like this. Because this night, no doubt, is a night in which we are honored with the night of the birth of Imam al-Hasan. Salawatullah wa salamu alayhi. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Allah, honor me with the ziyarah of Jannat al baqiyah 
as well, Ya Allah, on our family members that they're able to join us on that ziyarah. If you pray that prayer and you ask and call with that dua, nothing is more beloved to your deceased than when you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to let them come from the world of Barzakh to accompany you in the visitation of Muhammad and Al Muhammad salawatullah wa salamuhu alayhima. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to be amongst those who visit the graves of Muhammad and Al Muhammad. Ya Allah, our marhumin, allow them to see us in the best of lights, Ya Allah. Cover their eyes from the sins that we commit, Ya Allah. Bring joy to them wherever they may be. Allow them to come on the ziyarat of Muhammad and Al Muhammad. Salawatullah wa salamu alayhima. This night is a wonderful night for us all. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to receive the shafa'a of Imam al Hassan. Salawatullah wa salamu alayhi. Of course, I would recite Masai, but it's a night of wilada. So we'll all try and smile this night. Bring up your kids with the love of this Imam, insha'Allah. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the Surah Al Fatiha. But wherever you may be, the loudest of your salawat. Hey.